Hello everyone, welcome to What If Issei and Others Lost the War with Rizavim Lucifer and Went Back in Time Part 5. Before we start please go support Rich Tales for writing that awesome fanfic, now let's begin. This is the translated version I made. There will be some wrong he or she calling here because it's translated so let me clear this essay as a male in this story. Chapter 15. Covenants. Have you ever wondered how world leaders discuss their multiple plans for the not too distant future? It is a long process that requires a lot of planning, because a simple mistake could jeopardize the confidentiality of these meetings. Or so the conspiracy theorists say. To start, choose a safe place to chat, such as a facility unknown to the public, an uncrowded store, or even the most bizarre place possible, whether it's an outhouse in the middle of nowhere or your backyard. Then the moment of truth begins, where they discuss future plans with their respective advantages and disadvantages, their own interests as general ones, threats that may arise, what they will have dinner later, etc. Finally, a conclusion is reached in which most or all of those present agree. Something similar is currently happening at this very moment. But with the small difference that they are not individuals with a lot of influence in the world, but rather two high school demon girls accompanied by their closest servants. And they're also not in a super secret location away from all traces of society. Or so it seems at first glance. It's been a while since I came here, said the beautiful and voluptuous Rhea's Gremory, wearing only a towel that barely covered her body. A body that many women would desire. Have you come before? Asked another girl with jet black hair and with measurements equal to or greater than the previously mentioned one. Akendo Himijima looked at the place where they were interested, using a white towel in the same way. We use this place to talk about private things behind the aforementioned. The host of this meeting Sona Citri appeared in the company of her queen. It goes without saying that they are still in their underwear this is a sauna that I have prepared personally for us. It's an alternative kingdom that is directly connected to Sona Sama's headquarters, explained the companion of the EC president, Tsubaki Shinra, taking a seat in the ostentatious sauna. Surely this place is worth the same as a mansion no one can enter once the entrance is sealed. Then it is not surprising that anything spoken here remains a secret, commented the Gremory Queen, admiring the infrastructure of the place. The luxuries enjoyed by high-class demons are impressive. Although most of it is actually trivial things, like being scolded by our mothers or something else, the crimson-haired girl added, sitting down, having the Citri heiress on her right and her best friend on her left. As for Sona usually revolves around her older sister, right? Ara Ara, so you two also came from that era, Akeno joked, remembering the brothers of both pure blood demons with something in common. They have what is known as a sister complex, or in simple words. They are some Siscones. It's an old story from a long time ago, said Sona, avoiding a conversation that had as its main topic the bad habits of her one Isan, who should behave like the adult woman she already is. And more so because she is a Mao. But we didn't come here to talk about trivialities, right? The Redeed declared, wanting her to move on to what concerns them, receiving a nod from the violet-eyed girl. Then they can complain about her relatives. This morning, I had contact with two people from the church the vice president of the student council began. There is no better way to start an important meeting than by suddenly dropping the bomb. Contact. The raven girl asked, covering her mouth in surprise. I haven't seen them in the city for a while, said the Gremory heiress, remembering the events of several weeks ago, such as the bloodbath in the town's old church. And what were they looking for? They want to talk to us, Rias, the EC president announced to her stunned childhood friend. Do church members wish to speak with demons? You must be kidding the Redi did not hesitate to express her disbelief. Even if there is no hostility, the tension will still be present. Oju Sama had warned me that there would be exorcists around here, but I never thought they would want to have a talk. So Grafia Sama had already informed you beforehand. Tell me, when were you planning to tell me? That last thing Sona said was a sign that she is very upset. In any case, this is not good. Rias quickly changed the subject to prevent the black haired woman from reproaching her for her blunder. So, what did you tell them? Dot I accepted, the Citriera said immediately. This is not the time to start arguments, like criticizing her friend's mistakes. She settles for glaring at her. Tomorrow after school, they will go to your club. Like us and my servants, eh? The crimson-haired girl was still stupefied. And there's even more. However, there is something that worries me, Sona continued, staying as calm as possible. These two church associates carried a sacred sword with them, Tsubaki reported as seriously as usual. For the two guests that news felt like cold water slowly running down her back. The holy sword. It was impossible for Akeno to hide her shock. In this city of all places. The Gremory era spoke, still not believing what was coming out of the mouth of her childhood friend. Will there be an affiliate of theirs here? We don't know his intentions. But it could be him the sea president's words were totally unexpected for the duo of Gremory girls. Do you mean the? Sekiruite. I don't like to make assumptions based on hunches, but it's a possibility, Sona responded half-heartedly to Rhea's question, cleaning her glasses. That guy made her head spin. 
do you think the church already knows of its existence? The blue-eyed woman was unable to imagine that the Welsh dragon of the Sira had gained so much attention in such a short time. I see that as unlikely, the Citriaris theorized, expanding her panorama of ideas. Heaven would never take lightly any issue related to celestial dragons. If so, they would have sent more exorcists. Neither they nor any other faction would hesitate to kill its bearers if they posed a real threat, it's true. Even Ani Sama revealed to me that if the Sekar Uite tried to kill someone from Razor's nobility or him, he would not have hesitated to confront him, the Redeed complimented, remembering in detail how Serzich's was about to teleport to the arena. To protect the fried chicken when the Red Emperor Dragon cornered him. But in any case, we won't talk about him if our guests don't do it first the president of the student council chose to end the topic of the masked man there. Be careful, there is still something he wants to know. Good. He noticed you were distressed, Sona continued, drawing the attention of the crimson-haired girl, who didn't know how to continue the conversation. Tell me, is this about Iktokun? Ah yes, Rias admitted, collapsing in her seat, receiving the silent support of his queen, she continued talking about his concerns. I can't imagine how he will react when he sees the church envoys, especially if he sees his sacred swords. That statement made many things make sense to the short-haired black woman now, she knows very well the affection that her childhood friend feels for her servants, treating them like her family, but the problem is that all of them, without exception, have fears and insecurities that have tormented them before and after becoming slaves of the slave. Gremory clan. None of them openly show it, but every day is a martyrdom for them, in the case of the blonde knight, his background with the church and the sacred swords will mean that, by the time he must face his past, it will be impossible to know what the boy will do as a result. In simple words, he and the others are ticking time bombs. He has also noticed that Rias has already tried many times to dialogue with her pieces to try to support them with their traumas even a little, but none of her attempts have borne fruit. The only thing with which she has had small results have been gestures. Affectionate, like hugs or a kiss on the forehead, but these advances only postpone the unavoidable. Look, if you don't want him to do something stupid on the day of the meeting, tell him once and for all, the Citriaris advised as best she could to her territory partner and friend, even though there was very little time. It's inevitable. Let him know, but the longer you wait to tell him, the worse his reaction will be. I'll. Try answered the president of the CIO, unsure of keeping her word. Feeling the hand of her queen on her shoulder as a sign of support. Sona and even Tsubaki noticed the hesitation in the Gremory heiress's response, with the former being 50% sure that she will not be able to tell the truth to her only knight. If that happens, she will have to be on the lookout. Both from the visitors and from Kiba himself. I hope so, hey. Did I tell you about the time I saw Ice chasing a butterfly? Said the crimson-haired girl, leaning on her legs at the same time she received the tired look from the sea president. Oh no, here we go again, the Citri heiress muttered under her breath when she knew what Rias was doing. Talking about irrelevant issues, like boys are. But there was a hint of curiosity in her, since she was her rival. Unofficial academic that her childhood friend was talking about wait, he did what? It was at that moment that the quartet of demon girls began to talk about real trifles of high school teenagers, even with the initial resistance of the short-haired black-haired girl, in this case being how strange some of the boys at the academy are. How complicated are the demons of this era? Dinner time is usually very quiet, we just eat, chat a little about how our day was, and enjoy the food mom made. Well, today wasn't quite like that. I'm not looking to create a misunderstanding, but since we now have two guests, it was predictable that my parents would want to create an environment of greater trust, telling them that they will make sure that their stay in our house is the most comfortable for them. Irina also took the opportunity to sit next to me and began to tell me everything she had experienced since leaving Kuo, taking as an example having experienced a more intimate approach with God. I only listened to her or nodded when necessary. But I already imagine what he means by that. My parents joined the conversation by asking my childhood friend a question that they should have asked her since they appeared at the door of the house. What brings you here? Are you exchange students? It was there that Irina with the occasional help of Zenovia told a more or less credible story of why they came to this place, obviously omitting her relationship with the church, in short, they are on vacation, and at the insistence of the first, they came here to Japan to rest a little. Apparently my parents believed it since they didn't ask any more questions. Even though I know this is a lie, I must maintain the facade that I don't know what they really are, it's just that it will be a matter of time before they discover my connections to the demons of the place. At the same time, I felt Zenovia's eyes on me, even as she took a bite of her pork chop, paying close attention to my every movement, as if she was trying to figure something out. I'm not exaggerating when I say that she couldn't stop looking at me, in fact, when we finished dinner and my mother had told them to follow her to show them her room, she didn't break eye contact with me until she went upstairs. I would be lying if I said that it wasn't strange. Currently the two are taking a bath while I went straight to my room. 
there are pending things that I must reason with. As soon as I locked the door, I put my hand on one of the four walls that surround me and channeled a little magic that made many symbols mostly Hebrew and Phoenician appear everywhere. The magic inhibiting barrier that it installed exclusively in my bedroom a few days ago it worked. My excuse for doing this was that if for some strange reason of being sensitive to magic appeared within 10 meters of my house, it would never notice my presence or drags, or when I used any type of tricks, and considering that there are two exorcists staying at my home, my paranoia is onto something. I sat down in my desk chair as I pulled out a box of chocolate-covered pockies and ate them, not caring that I had eaten less than 15 minutes ago. Having something sweet in my mouth makes it easier for me to concentrate. When thinking. As a result of not being able to keep my mouth shut, I will have to be more cautious when I want to talk to the dragon that lives in my left arm, both in the academy and in my house. It is also a fact that the henchmen of the lunatic Kakabiel have already begun to move, with as proof the appearance of Zenobia and Arena, as well as the murder of the third envoy of the church at the hands of Freed, and the fact that he stole Excalibur from him. I wonder if Azazel has already decided to come here to Kuo, to go to the building where I met him, when he had not been a demon for long to pay him a visit. The possibility that he is not in that place is still present, so if it is thus, it will be somewhat difficult for me to find him, because the bastard knows how to hide well. Moving on to my biggest concern. Kiba, on this occasion he still does not know that there are members of the church hanging around the area, much less that almost all of them are directly related to the Holy Sword project. If only seeing a photo where a holy sword appeared prompted him to resume his desire for revenge, I cannot predict what he would do when he is face to face with two carriers of Excalibur fragments. The madness he could do would be disastrous. It is obvious that there will be a meeting between the demons of the area and the duo of exorcists, tomorrow being the most likely day for said meeting, if I consider that originally not even 24 hours had passed between the sudden appearance of the girls in my room. Home with the first formal meeting between members of heaven and the underworld. I'll have to make up an excuse to leave school early tomorrow, and I'll keep an eye on the CIO and EC headquarters, in case the meeting happens at a different time and location, if it happens in the first place. From my point of view, it is guaranteed that everything will end in disaster. I still remember how Kiba and I faced them, and if it weren't for them to attack to kill, I don't think we would have lived to tell the tale. How I feel right now is the least of my problems, I just have to have one present feeling. To be ready for whatever is coming. Regardless of whether I am overwhelmed, nostalgic or worried. I should rest a little. I murmured into the air, finishing eating the last pocky that was in the package. For today I will try to sleep taking only half a pill. I stood up to turn down the light switch, but. Knock knock, I heard someone knock on my bedroom door, I just sighed as I turned the doorknob. The surprise I got after seeing who had knocked. Irina. Good night, ice cun. There I was, I had in front of me one of the women that has been on my mind the most these days, wearing a completely white nightgown that covered her entire body from her shoulders to her calves, just as I was observing her long orange hair. Which I was drying with a towel that I had with me. I feel a sweet fragrance coming from it, but I don't know if it's the shampoo or its natural smell. At what point did I start analyzing it in such a specific way? Shouldn't you be with Zenobia San? I spoke after opening the door completely, to which she took the opportunity to walk through. She saw every inch of my room, almost as if she were carefully inspecting it. Oh, she's fine, I left her in the guest room, and I told her I'd come in a moment she answered, walking towards my bed and then laying down on it. Her breasts jiggled a little when she let herself fall. Hell, no matter how hard I try, I can't help but think about tits. MMMM okay. So, how can I help you? I just wanted to thank you personally for offering us to stay at your house, she confessed, blushing, looking away. I guess she is saddened by the attention she received from my parents. Ah that, you don't have to thank me, I mentioned disinterestedly, placing myself in the center of my bed, looking at any other part of her body other than her bust. But it's true, no one had been so cordial with us since we arrived, she argued, standing up to approach me. Her violet eyes do look beautiful up close. DW well, I thought it wouldn't be right to leave you and Zenobia sent to her fate, P on the other hand, my parents are e delighted to have them here I hastened to respond when I realized what I had thought two seconds ago. What's wrong with me? You haven't changed anything, you know. She said, having a slight smile and looking at me with half-closed eyes. I can hear her breathing perfectly. You've always been very affable. It's funny. She wouldn't have said that last bit. If I had seen what my room was like before. I don't know what to say if if you keep saying t those things now I'm the one who's embarrassed. I'll never get used to being flattered, much less by people I know. Hey ice cun. I was so busy calming my nerves that I barely managed to hear Arena. Some strands of her hair covered her eyes, and the tone of voice she used was. Peculiar could you keep a secret for me? Huh? S sure I said almost out of inertia, since she had suddenly become serious. But first tell me. Dot do you believe in the supernatural? Everything he could ask me has to be just that. I complained to myself. 
It's as if it were impossible for me not to relate to the supernatural world in some way or another. It's the price of being my partner carrier Drake listened to my thoughts and reminded me why these things always happen to me. Sometimes I curse my luck you should be used to it by now, even more so now that your strength touches the barriers of what absurd. I hope you said it in a good way, I commented, returning my attention to my dear childhood friend, waiting for my answer. As I see it, lying to her is not an option, she will find out sooner or later. Do you think so? The talking reptile spoke sarcastically. I just ignored it. Well. If I told you, you wouldn't believe me haha, <laughs> I scratched my ear while I felt the panic in me increase. Eh? What do you mean? She asked, turning her head to the left in confusion. Um. I have f friends who are. Hell. When I revealed my friendship with the guys from the CIO and the C, he remained silent, looking me straight in the eyes and blinking only when necessary, discomfort was felt in the air until. How I, 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 I good, then everything will be easier when I tell you that I'm an exorcist on a secret mission. Ah wait, do you believe me? And how's that for an exorcist and a secret mission? I almost screamed after hearing it because of my fear that she would hate me for this. Not that she had a positive opinion about the servants of Lucifer at first. Oops I already said it he, but it was the opposite, it's like she wasn't bothered at all. She even gave herself a small bump on the head and stuck her tongue out like a little girl, after realizing the her words. D that's your secret. That's right, he declared, standing like a lightning bolt on my bed, making a pose worthy of the Power Ranger. Yes, I discovered that we both watched this children's program. Zenovia and I are sent from the Vatican, and we have come on an operation entrusted by the Lord himself. I still can't get it into my head that a reaction was not what I expected. She has always been very attached to the beliefs that were instilled in her as a child, especially if we consider that her father was also an exorcist, I think one of the best. His generation. I had already relaxed when the tension disappeared. I even closed my eyes and exhaled all the air that was stuck in my lungs, but suddenly I felt something sharp touch my chin. It gave me an all too familiar sensation. The first thing I see when I look up is Irina wielding a Katana Excalibur mimic, considering her sacred aura that came out of nowhere, at the same time that the previously mentioned one was looking at me. Distressed. I'm very sorry to have to do this, but. I can't let a loved one live as a prisoner of demons she declared, tightly squeezing the silver crucifix she was wearing in a necklace. I retract everything. What I said a moment ago it pains me to imagine what they forced you to do under their influence. No, 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 wait a second. Don't worry ice Kun. I will free you from your torture once and for all ignoring my pleas. She raised her weapon ready to kill me. Don't close your eyes when you're about to cut me in half amen. I haven't hurt anyone if that's what you think that worked to make him stop an inch from my arm. It was very close. I'm just helping them with paperwork, nothing more I swear to you my life. She remained static for a few seconds without taking her eyes off me. Fortunately, she lowered her sword and let out a long sigh before sitting back down. Okay, I believe you. I would hate to have to destroy my childhood friend after our reunion, she commented, still reluctant, turning her weapon into a hair tie that she put on her wrist. Although, can I ask you something else? I just nodded at his request. Do demons do paperwork? I managed to laugh a little because it was true. I never believed that demons would have tasks that an average office worker would perform on a daily basis, like filling out piles of boring papers. What's more, originally when I was given my first job as a demon, I thought I would have to sacrifice someone in the name of Satan or something like that, however it never crossed my mind that I would end up debating with my first client who is the most Drago Sable Fort. As the conversation between Arena and I went on, I told him the truth about how he ended up involved with the supernatural world, of course it was half-hearted, excluding that all this happened because I rejected Rhea's initial offer to join his peerage. And because I have a legendary dragon living in my left arm. Additionally, I take advantage of my stay in both the occult club and the student council to gather any information that is useful to me from the documents I review, from simple supply reports to minutes relevant to the underworld. Among the things she shared with me, she said that she would go with Zenovia to Kuo Academy tomorrow afternoon to reach an agreement with Rhea's Gremory and Sona Citri. That she told me that tomorrow will be the meeting with the girls just saved me a lot of surveillance problems. I tried to dig into the details of their mission, and the only thing I found out was that in this place there are traces of a thief who stole irreplaceable sacred objects of great power. It's nothing different from what happened the first time, considering that I know the person responsible. And because we faced death recently. I will face very powerful guys sooner than I thought. It doesn't matter if I am superior in many ways, only idiots are so sure of their victory. In the middle of the talk, we started telling anecdotes from childhood, and it was easy for me to follow along, since my memory was fresh as lettuce. I still feel bad that I forgot a lot of those moments in my past, for I will do my best to keep those times alive. Suddenly the album that contained the photograph of me and Arena as children in the park came to my mind. If I ask her, can she remember what happened that day?
By the way, Irina I waited for the opportunity to present itself, and I went for the album that I put on my shelf and flipped through the pages until I found what I wanted. Since we are talking about old memories, I wanted to ask you if you know anything about this, is it I don't remember that day very well. The e and I to my confusion, she began to stutter, just as her cheeks were acquiring an intense crimson tone. The id I say something wrong. L look what time it is, and it's already very very late, I better let you, but. I thought that you. It's only going to be 10 at night. Thank you for listening to me she spoke, interrupting me and taking quick steps towards the door. That attitude is very strange coming from her good night rest, slam, and she left. Ah what just happened? I muttered, seeing the door with small cracks, in fact, I'm impressed that this one is still intact. I hope the noise hasn't woken up my parents. Or the neighbors. Analyzing better the reaction of my dear childhood friend, I consider that she was very strange and unexpected, it was enough for her to talk about the photo and boom, she became a bundle of nerves. Maybe what happened that day was so embarrassing that he preferred to evade the question and flee as soon as possible. From everything I have lived how come I can't remember that? Just when I thought I would have answers to this and could finally figure out why these kinds of abnormalities in history take place, the world throws me a roadblock. One that will take me a long time to overcome. What happened that day? Was it a good or bad thing? Has your opinion of me changed? That. That. What? I repeated over and over again the doubts that were consuming me like an eagle its prey. Little by little I'm taken by. Partner, bombard yourself with questions tomorrow, now you will only make yourself anxious, and being like this, you won't even be able to pretend to be sleeping, I had to endure the lecture I received from Drake, because what he said made a lot of sense. Sometimes I hate you, stupid dragon. With nothing left to worry about other than thinking, I swallowed the pill, turned off the light and lay down, determined to rest with a smaller dose of sleeping pills at least for tonight. I hope it won't be a long one. Hours later, what a beautiful night, I thought, admiring the starry sky. I feel the fresh night breeze all over my face. Dude. It's four in the morning, said the talking reptile as if he had woken up recently. In reality he's not sleepy like me either is this really your idea of killing time? If someone saw me they would probably be wondering. What is a brat doing going to the river in the middle of the night? Well, to answer that we first have to go over a few details. The effects of the half-sleeping pill I took wore off less than 15 minutes ago, and since I didn't want to experience another nightmare again, I preferred to do something more active than being bedridden until the sun comes up. I went to the closet quietly so as not to wake anyone, I grabbed some bait and a handful of fish lures, along with a bucket and my trusty fishing rod. When I had everything ready, I sneaked out of the house towards the river. Night fishing is fun, you'll see I kept a positive attitude while going down the sloping terrain to reach the water level. It was a bit difficult considering I had both hands full. I don't see the interesting thing in catching fish, a skeptical mutant lizard said to my statement. Grumpy at least tell me you. Let's see if I haven't lost my touch. I ignored Drake's strange pause while well, he very carefully put the bait on the hook, he was already ready for my launch until. Step 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 step, partner behind you. After hearing those words of warning, I abruptly turned my body to see whatever was behind me. Wow, calm down boy, I come in peace. There was a tall man who looked to be about 20 years old, with a medium build, black hair, golden bangs, and a black goatee. He is wearing a long maroon coat with a v-neck and a high collar open to the hem. The long coat also had two black belts around the waist and four black bands on each arm, two of the bands on the wrist and the other two near the elbow. He also wears grey pants and brown shoes. At that moment, only one thing came to my mind. How did I not notice you before, stupid old Azazel? That's right, of all the people I could run into it has to necessarily be the current leader of Grigori. If before I hated my luck, now I curse it even more. Hey kid, are you okay? Azazel asked me dismayed, at the same time that I tried to figure out why he approached me. Maybe he already knows that I associate with beings that are not at all ordinary. What is a kid like you doing in this place late at night? Thought I should be the one to ask you that, I said, getting defensive, taking advantage of the natural fear of a stranger approaching you, no one around and everything being dark. Well, I'm an adult and I can do whatever I want, he responded with a shrug, quite unconcerned with the situation we're in. But you're just a brat, so I'll tell you again, why don't you? Are you at home? He repeated, taking on the role of responsible adult or something like that. I am not obliged to explain everything I do to others, but if I have to do so to save myself future problems as is all in this case, then I will do so, but following two simple concepts. Being quick and concise. I live nearby and I wanted to come fishing, just that, at dawn. He questioned, raising his eyebrow, not believing me one bit. Any problem? Ah ha 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 ha, don't be nervous he laughed, breaking the tension that was building during this little talk. Anyway, I don't care what you say or do, I was just bothering you, kid. You are someone very strange Oji-san. Yes, whatever, finish quickly and go home, he recommended, turning around. 
didn't you care what I did? It's just advice, it's up to you if you listen to me he managed to hear me and proceeded to say goodbye, leaving with his hand in the air towards another place until another. Just as he left, I returned half my attention to fishing. The remaining attention was focused on the guy who just left. Maybe he's already moved several meters away from me, but I feel like he's still watching me while he goes in the direction of wherever he's staying. It's like the damn thing has eyes behind his head. If I had used my sensory abilities, I am 100% sure that he would realize that they were stalking him, so I had to concentrate as hard as possible until he was at a great distance from me. It took 20 minutes until finally I could finally breathe easy. I didn't want to run into Azazel yet since he is one of the most unpredictable people I have ever met. He can be very childish and at the same time very severe, attitudes that can be confusing, strange, and on some level, scary. When we planned the time travel, he warned me repeatedly to take care of everything and everyone without exception if I wanted to achieve our goal, especially himself. But now that I think about it much better, I don't think this was a coincidence, I know because Azazel never does anything strange without having a reason. I highly doubt that he discovered that I have Drag inside me, it's most likely that he knows of my run-ins with Rias, Sona and maybe even Raynor. I could well complain about having gotten carried away and established a little friendship with all of them, but it is too late to regret it. The only thing left for me is that when the time is right, I have enough courage to end said ties. Besides, repentance is only for fools, and I'm not a fool. Almost. What a stressful time I thought to myself, taking a seat on a stone seat, holding my fishing rod with one hand while massaging my temple with the other. I thought you were already used to this, I thought so. But this shows me otherwise I continued the small conversation looking at the buoy that remained static in the water, that is, without signs of any fish in the vicinity I must continue training. After this fruitless moment, I continued trying to catch something for another hour, until I managed to catch a few fish big enough to feed at least a dozen people. Another hour later I returned home and decided to waste time meditating until the sun came up, then I had the brilliant idea of preparing breakfast for my parents and our guests, and in less than 20 minutes I had already served four dishes of grilled fish, miso soup, rice and tea. I'm not very hungry, in fact, I wasn't even planning on having breakfast, a piece of toast with jelly is enough for me. I just wanted to relive old memories going fishing, and combined with the adrenaline I felt when I ran into Azazel, it made me lose my mind. Almost complete appetite. Uff I'm done, I said, wiping the sweat that fell from my forehead with my forearm. Ice. I was going to go upstairs to take a shower when I saw mom coming down the stairs. I think she didn't expect to see me awake so early. Good morning Okus and I greeted her as always, but she seemed to be attentive to something else. Did you prepare breakfast? She asked without believing what was on the table. I think. Well. Yes, I confessed sadly, scratching behind my left ear. It wasn't bad, was it? No, no, not at all son. You just helped me a lot, I really didn't know what to cook. I'm glad it's like that, I added, comforted after knowing that she hadn't done anything wrong. But mom still looked at me strangely. I've noticed enormous changes in you. I won't deny that it took me by surprise, I just. I feel like my baby has grown a lot in such a short time, <laughs> and it's not that big of a deal, of course it is. Thank you Ice when I was going to return to the bathroom, my mother gave me a hug, followed by a kiss on the cheek I have always known that you are a good boy, and I have always been very proud of you you. I truly believe that your father thinks the same dot I only managed to remain silent, returning the hug go ahead and get ready for school. The moment we let go, she went to the living room and turned on the television to watch the news. I, on the other hand, was still on the second step, motionless. I started to see blurry so I rubbed my eyes and. They were wet dot. I'm crying. I guess my mother's word struck a chord in me. Hum I sure look pathetic. But I don't care, I found out that my parents love me. And always have made. I don't cry out of sadness. I cry out of happiness. I bit my tongue, holding back the urge to scream, and wiped away the small tears that had formed in my eyes. With renewed energy and putting on my best smile, I exclaimed so that Okasan could hear me loud and clear. Obviously without waking up the others in the process. Clear, da you're still as loud as ever. Not I know, I concluded, going up the stairs two at a time. I know that today will be a very hectic day, but this little push gives me enough strength to keep going. Don't worry, mom and dad, I will never let you down. I took a quick bath, came out dressed in the academy uniform, and went to sit down to accompany my mother. Otmsan, Zenovia and Irina came down shortly after and said good morning to us, they went to eat, and it was obvious that they enjoyed it, since they didn't say a word until they had finished every last bite. They asked me if I wasn't going to have breakfast and I lied saying that I had eaten early. Just as I was going to leave, my parents asked me to give the girls a tour of Kuo. I saw it as a good idea so I agreed and waited for them outside until they came out wearing their robes. There was nothing to highlight other than when we finished the tour at the academy, I had to meet Kiba. Oh no. Good morning Ice Koo. 
he greeted me as usual. But his smile faded as soon as he saw who was behind me. H hello Kiba I pretended not to have noticed his change, and in his place I stretched out my hand so that we could high five. He did, only without taking his eyes off the sword that Zenovia was carrying. I'm Miss A, we appreciate your guidance, but we must go somewhere else, declared the previously mentioned woman in the direction of another side. Surely they already realize that Kiba is a demon. Excuse me. Yes, no problem, Kiba's death look gives a very bad feeling. See you later Ice Kunarina said energetically, jumping up and down next to Zenovia. You hoo hoo. As enthusiastic as ever, I said to myself, fascinated by the spirit of my dear childhood friend, until I was taken out of my thoughts when I felt a hand on my shoulder. Kiba. Hey Ice Kun. She spoke with her head bowed, just as she tightened her grip on me. This is bad, very bad. How do you know those two? I I I can explain it to you, answer me, he demanded, grabbing me by both shoulders. He is very angry and besides, he is getting impatient. Answer me. Ikto, oh, it's enough, Kiba Kun, Kiba San. I San, Ikto Senpai. Not far from us, an angry Rias appeared in the company of a stunned Akeno san, a fearful Asia and Kaneko chan's incredulous expression. It is a fact that they also saw my companions. But you? Kiba turned to see his mistress still upset. He did not take long to formulate his next words, did you know that there were exorcists here? Ah yes, she confessed, biting her lip, surely feeling guilty for hiding such information from her knight. We will have a meeting with them after class. And when were you going to tell me? It's obvious that Kiba is not thinking clearly, because he exploded as soon as Ria's finished speaking. This attitude doesn't go at all with the Kiba that I know do you know how long I've been waiting for an answer? Opportunity how is it? The opportunity to come. Slap, Ria's did not hesitate to slap Kiba when he raised his voice at her. Calm down, she said sternly, with one of her hands on her hip. I was going to tell them today to get them to behave, especially you. Leaving aside her initial anger, she began to acquire a more understanding demeanor. Dot I didn't want you to do it. Nonsense, but you, Ice Kun. From the way Kiba called me and Ria's, it was clear that he regained control of himself, so he proceeded to bow briefly I'm sorry, I lost my composure, Kiba. Ikto. Oh. Ria's seemed not to know what to do, especially when he went inside the school with his head down. I thought he was going to follow the girls from the church wait, I wanted to go up to Ria's and ask her what just happened, but I just felt someone pulling me by the sleeve of my shirt. I senpai. You better not come to the club today was what I heard from Kaneko-chan with her typical monotonous voice, only there was a touch of melancholy in it, we'll figure it out. I I guess, I said, exhausted after accepting that I couldn't do much, especially when that proposal was supported by Akeno-san and a little by Asia. Passing right by Ria's, I was only able to see her for a few seconds before heading to my classroom. Soon, my love, soon I will help. You, and my best friend. At the CIO headquarters, after the school day. We appreciate you receiving us, my name is Zenovia, and I am Shid Marina. The meeting between exorcists and demons had begun. In an armchair were the leaders of the Gremory and Citrine ability. In the other, the two envoys of the church were carefully observing each of the demons. Being more specific to two of them. Nice to meet you, the crimson-haired girl greeted politely, along with a slight nod from her territory partner. The feeling is not mutual, the brutal honesty of the blue-haired exorcist only managed to make the Gremory heiress begin to raise her destructive aura. How insolent. Ahem, let's get to what concerns us, Sona intervened, quickly changing the topic, since they had not exchanged even two sentences, and her friend was already about to lose her temper. It's going to be a long meeting. Why would the followers of Have God commandeer to chat with us demons? Although one has not yet been located, the six remaining fragments of Excalibur were in three divisions of the church, but three were stolen by the fallen angels Serena related, surprising the vast majority of the young demons present. Thefts that kind of thing doesn't happen every day. We have this, the sacred sword of destruction, Excalibur destruction, stated the blue-haired exorcist, showing her sacred sword. And my sacred sword of mimicry, Excalibur mimic the orange-haired woman followed, removing her left arm from her tunic to show a white wool bracelet. No, one could even believe that that is a deadly weapon. Well, but how are we involved if they say that those responsible are fallen angels? The Redeed questioned after calming the clearing of her mind. It seems that they are not the only ones who do not tolerate those black feathered creatures. Dot. This particular problem is between us and them, Zenovia continued, giving fleeting glances at two of the three blondes who were behind their masters. One sees her and her partner with a lot of hatred, while the other is very dot familiar, we cannot afford to face the demons of the city. You can tell they are aware of everything, the student council president speculated, drinking some of the tea that was on the table. It tastes as good as ever. Do you think we would be allied with the fallen to do something to their sacred swords? You demons despise everything related to our order, the blue net pointed out without mincing words. She is somewhat right with that argument. 
I'm sure they would take advantage of any opportunity to destroy the fragments, so they are not in a position. So different from that of the fallen angels. That statement did not amuse either of the two demon women. The power of destruction could be seen in the eyes of the Grimmery heiress, while an icy air seemed to come from the Citri heiress. Being lowered to the level of those second-rate fallen was a great offense. An offense that they will have to endure, otherwise they want to start a battle in this room. If necessary, we will be forced to destroy them completely, even if they are related to two of the current mass, despite the girl's clear annoyance, the blue-haired exorcist continued to provoke them. If you know a lot, then let me tell you something else. We would never be on the side of a fallen angel, Sona stated, crossing her legs and arms. She will not let them continue comparing her to truly despicable beings. In the name of the Citri family, I swear that I will never would do such an atrocity to humiliate Leviathan. Like us, the Grimmery family Rias was not far behind and defended her honor as best she could before the envoys of the church not in a million years would we be able to tarnish Lucifer's name. I am glad to hear that, this is exactly what our headquarters expected. I told you, Zenovia, the orange-haired woman interrupted her companion to emphasize the obvious, but with her touch. So you just wanted to know that we wouldn't be against you and your god. The Redeed said, calming her urges for the second time in less than five minutes. Of course, Zenovia stated, standing up like Arena. We simply want to make sure that you stay away from this dispute. Understood. Thank you for her time Excalibur Mimics Wielder exclaimed. In the eyes of some of the reincarnated demons, she is too. Enthusiastic. Won't you stay and have some tea? Offered the crimson-haired girl to the duo of exorcists. Manners first. I'm sorry, but we can't make friends with demons, said the blue-haired exorcist, rejecting the CIO president's invitation and heading towards the exit. We said goodbye, but there was something. Something that bothered her, like a mosquito buzzing near her ear without stopping. She had a feeling, for this reason she turned to see the only blonde in this room. I've been wondering this since I saw you outside this institution, Zenovia commented, looking at the girl from head to toe. Are you Asia Argento? Hey? Uh. Why yes the aforementioned she only managed to respond between stutters. Odd I never thought I would see a witch here, the bluenet snapped, leaving everyone present speechless, especially the bishop, who was gradually being dominated by a mixture of fear and remorse. Ah, are you that ex-nun who became a witch? Said the violet-eyed girl with her usual childish tone. One that could very well seem rude I heard that you were exiled for curing demons and fallen angels, but I didn't know you had become a demon, um. And an I. Asia San said some of the members of the Citri clan. How cruel. To think that a saint would join the demons. No one is perfect, I think. Hey, stop Genshirm Saji, Sona's second pawn, could not hide his indignation and wanted to approach the exorcist. But he was stopped by two of his companions. Gan Chan it was Hanakai Momo who stopped the blonde with the help of Meguri Tamo, both shaking their heads at what the boy was going to do. Do you still believe in our god? The brown-eyed believer asked the former healer of the church. But Zenovia, she is a demon, Irina denied due to the lack of common sense of the situation. A reincarnated demon who still believes in the Lord. Nonsense. No, some blasphemers feel some guilt and retain a little of her faith the blue-haired exorcist refuted, firm in questioning her, I can feel that emanating from her. Oh, really? The Excalibur mimic wielder quickly changed her mind, so she addressed the golden-haired girl once again Hey, Asia-san, do you still believe in the Lord? Even though you're a demon? Odd I, I just can't stop doing it the Grimmery Bishop confessed, feeling her body heavier than usual I will believe in him all my life. In that case, let's kill you now, Zenovia ruled, approaching the blonde. This heresy cannot be overlooked. The sins you have committed will be forgiven by God. Saying that, she brought her hand closer to the sword she was carrying. At the waist I will judge you. In his name, enough. I will not allow you to belittle my servant. The Grimmery heiress decided that she had gone too far with this whole spectacle, and she confronted the visitors. I'm not belittling her, it's just my duty. As a woman of faith, the one with green hair stated, smiling superiorly. Sinners must receive punishment from her. But when it seemed that the pawn Citri was going to launch himself at the blue-haired exorcist, I didn't expect anyone else to beat him to it. Much less to be out. Ikto Ikto Kun the two high-class demons exclaimed. That's right ladies and gentlemen. Kiba Ikto, the faithful knight of Rhea's Gremory, has confronted the wielder of Excalibur destruction without any trace of fear. I won't allow you to do anything to Asia-san, the grey-eyed blonde said, creating an immense two-handed demonic sword. Do you dare to interrupt a sacred atonement? The blunette warned, slowly unsheathing her weapon. If it's to protect my friend, I would face you too, the boy continued, now taking his battle pose. Odd if I were you, I would lower that sword and walk away, if you value your life Excalibur destruction was almost free and ready to cut off heads. But everything was even worse when someone else made an appearance. 
And if I were you, I would stop acting like an idiot. Both the demons and the envoys of the church turned towards where that distorted voice came from, and there it was, holding the brunette's wrist, so she wouldn't pull the sword out of him in its entirety. One of the few individuals capable of surpassing the power of a god-class being. D. Siki. Siki. C.C. Sekiruite, the wielder of Twilight Healing sputtered, unable to digest what has happened in such a short time. What? The exorcist shouted in shock. What, Sekiruite? This meeting was destined to end badly from the beginning, but with the intervention of the Welsh dragon, the new question was. How badly will this whole mess end? Chapter 16. Reality Strike. I still remember it. There isn't a single day that I don't think about what happened several years ago. Before I met Butchu. When I was told that I had something special that made me part of a small group of people and that I would enter some kind of program that would be beneficial to the church, I believed that I could finally find value and meaning in my life. But everything was a farce. It turned out to be a true martyrdom. Test after test, little by little they became more risky both for me and for the others involved, who became my first friends. For me, they were the only ray of light in a wide sea of darkness, even though there were difficult days, whether due to hunger, thirst or even illness, we always found a way to stay standing, because we thought that in the end everything would be worth it. It was not like that. I have that event very clear in my memory, none of them managed to be compatible with Excalibur, so we knew that the experiment failed, so they decided that we were no longer useful and ordered them to get rid of us. Eyes wearing protective suits appeared and used poison gas on me and my companions, but I somehow escaped from there, even though I was gnawed by the guilt of having left the others behind. They were surely already dead when I entered the forest. That's how I lost all my friends in a single night. And all because of that damned old man and his perverse project, I walked barely conscious until I couldn't take it anymore and I collapsed in the cold snow. I could feel the ravages of both the poison and the low temperature throughout my being and I was about to resign myself to dying. I remember that there was a full moon and, on my deathbed, she appeared. Rhea's Gremory, whose attention I attracted what led her to reincarnate me as her servant. As time went by, several had tried to convince me that it was time for me to get over it, to move on and leave everything in the past. But they don't understand anything. They don't know what it's like to lose everything. I trained and trained until I broke my bones to become stronger and fulfill my ambition. But over time I distanced myself from that idea until I had almost forgotten it, if it weren't for him. I'm Mice Kun. The only person who wanted to be my friend in a long time is, at the same time, the reason why I have decided to seriously reflect on what I want to do, mainly because of what happened this morning. Why was he accompanied by those exorcists? How is he related to them? If I didn't know better, I'd consider him a magnet for trouble. First the fallen angels, then Razor Phoenix, and now two holy sword wielders. At that point, I stopped believing it was a coincidence. So I got carried away and as soon as we were alone, I tried to question him to find out more about those two girls, their names, their purpose here in Kuo, their abilities, any useful information, but he froze and started stuttering, which only made me more desperate. If I had to force the information out of him, I would have. But before he could do such a stupid thing, but you and the others appear, I also didn't hesitate to vent all my frustration on my mistress, and what I received was a slap. That's when I knew I had gone too far, so I apologized to Ice Kun and went to sit on a tree near the old building to wait for the blessed meeting that Butchu told us about. It wasn't until after class that I finally got a look at the two exorcists, and to my surprise, they both turned out to be carrying fragments of Excalibur. Somehow, the church got what it wanted all along, and that makes me get very angry. In no instant did I stop feeling my blood boil with every word that came out of the blue-haired girl's mouth. I'm sure that her arrogant and disrespectful tone didn't just make me angry. But she crossed the line when she announced to all of us that she would kill Asia San for alleged blasphemy. With that statement, something snapped in me. The little patience I still had vanished. I put myself between Asia San and the exorcist named the Sekar Yuite, the same one who saved my leader, came out of nowhere and grabbed the exorcist's wrist. This startled even the most serious people in the place, like Kaneko-chan and even Kaichu. Not even the envoys of the church were able to remain serene, in fact, their facial expressions changed drastically within seconds. But I don't care, nothing and no one will stop me in my ambition. No, in my life goal. I will destroy Excalibur at any cost. Thump thump, thump thump, thump thump. The current situation cannot be worse than it already is. The silence is such that you could even hear the heartbeats of the demons and humans in the room, which little by little were accelerating their pace. The architect of this is none other than the Red Emperor Dragon, whose grip on the blue-haired girl's right wrist was still firm. I hope they have finished their nonsense the masked man was the first to break the tension that had condensed in the atmosphere. Let go of me, Zenobia demanded, ignoring the hooded man's mockery. No matter how much she tried to free herself from him, he simply wouldn't give in. Yes, let her go, said the orange-haired girl, showing her Excalibur in the form of a katana. 
The change from her childlike countenance to her more serious one was radical. I will do it when they lower their weapons, the Welsh dragon ordered, looking at the ecclesiastical warriors one by one, until he returned his attention to the blonde swordsman. That applies to you too, child. Why should I listen to you? Said the Gremory knight, not at all phased by the request of the wearer of the boosted gear dot, or that's what he wanted to appear. Because if you don't, then I'll have to force you. And the same goes for you too, the man threatened, increasing his aura, which gave everyone chills, especially the reincarnated demons. At least it wasn't so suffocating. Like the one they felt on previous occasions. Hibba didn't have many options, so he reluctantly agreed, but without completely letting his guard down. What brings you here, Sekuyute? Sona asked, crossing her arms and standing next to a mute Rias. This guy really likes to meddle in other people's affairs. I came here to avoid stupid fights like this, explained the aforementioned, releasing the exorcist's wrist as he pointed out the obvious to the Citriaris, since this could well have been considered a declaration of war. In addition to commenting on something that seemed very dot interesting, exorcists, explain yourself, Irina demanded, irritated by the shameless attitude of the supposed dragon of domination of this generation. They requested this meeting to establish a non-aggression pact with the demons, and in less than five seconds your partner breaks that truce when she decides to kill one of them for blasphemy, the boy answered the complaint of the girl with pigtails, making emphasis on the last word. The pretext that the majority of church followers use to do as they please has more than fed up funny, right? What we do is none of your business, the brunette responded, massaging her wrist. The guy is strong, there's no doubt. That's exactly where you're wrong, girl, the stranger continued, slowly walking around the club room, under the watchful eyes of the others. Why so much interest? Dot and a heretic. Because of the poisonous tone of voice of the Excalibur wielder, it was that the crimson-haired girl came out of her trance, and now she really got angry, even though she had already called that to the blonde recently. Enough, if you persist in calling my pretty servant that way, you will pay dearly, said the Gremory heiress in defense of her bishop. She will make sure to severely punish anyone who dares to denigrate her family. She. Little girls who think more with their swords than with their heads wouldn't understand that mockery was said with the purpose of instigating the blue-haired girl to commit something very foolish. Suffice it to say that she was on the verge of achieving it. If you have a problem with the justice that we deliver in the name of God, why don't we discuss it with a friendly combat? Church. God is this a joke or what? He responded without taking seriously the provocation of the girl with green hair. She is still equally or more airheaded than he remembers, wouldn't their superiors reprimand them for this? Only in case they find out, the girl with the green hair speculated without losing that annoying air of arrogance. So. Do you accept? They are crazy if they think that I accept. That seems fine to me, Vibasan. The blonde knight was not far behind and agreed to have a battle against the two foreigners, even though the challenge was not directed at him. His companions, including Asia, could only worry about his well-being. The Sekiruite remained silent for a few seconds until. Aha I guess there is no other alternative he said sighing defeated. Although he was a little eager to fight for a while but first, rules. Who said you would make rules? I never said it would be me, but them, the young man's response to the brunette made her a little impatient, especially when she was pointing at the pair of high-class demons. We are in her territory after all. Huh? Let's go outside, the Welsh dragon concluded, invoking a large magic circle on the floor that took away every living being within reach of him. That is, the demons, the exorcists and him, of course. It was the backyard of the abandoned building where both the group of demons and the three guests appeared. Due to the sudden magical trip, some of Lucifer's servants became slightly disoriented until they realized where they were. Sona quickly looked at her right hand, Tsubaki, and the latter soon created a magical dome that covered a large amount of ground. It will be enough to hide this combat from the human eye. The barrier is ready, Kaichu, the long-haired black-haired woman reported, descending to the ground after completing her task. Perfect, what are you waiting for? What will be our limitations? Excalibur mimics wielder exclaimed with a small part of her usual childish self. She will finally have in real combat after quite some time, and she wanted to enjoy the taste of glory. Since. Leviathan's sister thought dissatisfied, so she devised two simple rules as quickly as she could first, killing is prohibited, and second, Ikto Kun. In the middle of his decree, he as he directed the grey-eyed blonde to say the following. You and. Him. Will fight together, so that it will be a fair fight. Sona, are you sure about this? Rhea showed her insecurity about this whole mess and whispered to her territory partner what she thought about it. The emotional instability of her night added to the presence of the hooded man had her nerves on edge. Limit. No, but. What other option do we have? Commented the president of the sea, not even a little convinced of what the church envoys were up to. And much less now that there is a longinus bearer involved. It was almost impossible for this not to happen. It could be. He responded with the same insecure tone of voice. 
But he must make an effort not to show weakness, much less against the two religious guests, so he sharpened his gaze and acquired a more stoic posture. Yes. This is simply an unofficial meeting. They will begin my signal where Sona's instructions for this friendly combat. If she can be called that way. I don't need your help, Welsh dragon, the Grimmery knight spat at his mate, while multiple swords of all kinds came out of the ground like carrots, she took the one closest to him, a golden blade of greatsword, and took a step forward. I'll take care of both of them alone. Oh, really? Asked the masked man, mocking the demon's overconfidence. Why is the desire to feel superior so latent among swordsmen? Well, let's see how you do with the one with blue hair. She seems to be the strongest, are you underestimating me? Irina said in a whisper, taking off her robe and wielding her katana. She definitely doesn't like the Red Emperor Dragon, and she will tell him everything she thinks of him as soon as she has him on her knees. No. No matter, I will show you how strong my faith in the Lord makes me. We will do our best not to kill them, Zenobia said, imitating the actions of her companion, revealing her powerful sacred sword from the cloth that covered it. The black clothes of the exorcists came out, being perfectly adjusted to her figure, tights and dark anti-cut gloves that were also custom-made. I never thought that the exorcists wore combat suits that were suo. Hexy, the farmhand Citri added fascinated, admiring the clothing of the warriors with a slight nosebleed. Those black garments similar to Lycra do highlight the attributes of both women. Two of her companions did not like that comment, being more specific the white-haired bishop, Hanakai Momo, and the second pawn of the group, Numururuko. Brown hair tied at the sides and two long pigtails, green eyes and with cheeks puffed out, supposedly due to his senpai's lack of decency. One stepped on his left foot and the other pinched his right arm respectively at the same time that the white-haired girl looked at him very ugly. The male could only shut his mouth and complain silently. While the Citri girls were throwing their tantrum, Kiba lowered his head and started laughing out of nowhere, which disconcerted the wielder of Excalibur destruction. Are you making fun of us, demon? Yes, because I found what I've been looking for for a long time, to finally. While answering the Blunette's question, the swordsman demon returned his gaze to the front, with his eyes full of emotion. Record. Sword birth. This gets more interesting, Zenobia asked herself, swinging her sword. Perhaps low class falls short for her contender. Meanwhile, on the side of Shid Marina and the Welsh dragon, Sekriyuate Sen exclaimed the one with pigtails with stars in her eyes, ecstatic to discover the ability of the stranger, who remained stoic. The Lord has entrusted me with the task of defeating you in this place, so prepare to be judged. The key said the Red Emperor Dragon, not very convinced of what could happen. This girl's faith almost seems like an obsession, immediately afterwards, she walked to the left side of her, leaving the exorcist confused. W where are you going? I'll take one of the swords from here. To even things out a bit, commented the hooded man, taking out one of the many swords that came out of the underground. Coincidentally it was a katana, like arenas, with the only difference that the leaf was completely red hum, it will do. Begin, with the shout of the Citriaris, three of the four participants got into a battle pose. The remaining one continued with his bored expression. Kiba was the first to quickly head towards his opponent, launching attacks left and right with his huge golden sword. The girl with the green hair simply evaded each attack, as if she were analyzing the class demon's movements. Lo. If you think that with it you can even touch me, I'm sorry to tell you that you are wrong. Shut up and fight ignoring the last thing said by the blue-haired girl, the Grimmery swordsman raised his weapon to deliver a powerful downward blow, which was easily dodged by his rival with a simple jump back. The place where it was standing became a fairly large crater, as well as generating a small cloud of dirt. Zenovia saw through the dust that her opponent had been exhausted by the last attack due to his irregular breathing, so she charged towards the boy, brandishing her Excalibur to make a horizontal slash. Kiba barely managed to block the sacred sword of the destruction, as the blade of his weapon quickly acquired many cracks before breaking into pieces. The force of the blow also made the knight take several steps back, stopping right where the other swords he had created previously were. Excalibur destruction, as its name suggests, is capable of shattering whatever you put in front of it, such as demonic swords and. The swordswoman paused quickly not only to emphasize the obvious. Also to provoke the high school student. Lower class demons, DCH. The blonde clicked his tongue out of frustration and anger, so he quickly dropped what was left of the golden sword and took two others, one of ice and the other of fire, and launched himself again at the exorcist that will not happen again. The battle between those two not only increased the destruction caused, but also the nerves of the Grimmery and Citri entourage. Although the story was very different with the fight between the orange-haired girl and the Sekiryuite, the girl with pigtails was still on guard ready to counterattack any move the self-proclaimed Red Emperor Dragon makes. He, on the other hand, was intrigued by the weapon he borrowed. Ah, that's right, she won't believe that the nosy guy in the mask is the wielder of the boosted gear until she manifests, said Sacred Gear. She continues looking at that katana as if it were the most interesting thing in the world. She was still waiting. And waiting. Wait. 
You know what, enough is enough. Aren't you planning to attack me? Fed up with not seeing any intention from the Welsh dragon to take the initiative, Irina decided to ask him kindly what she was waiting for. The desire to cut him into pieces grew every moment. Oh. The hooded man came out of his trance when he heard the violet-eyed girl. It's true, he is in a pre-combat, so he returned his attention to the front, did I have to take the first step? Is this a joke for him or what? The expression of the Excalibur mimic wielder again changed from excited to irritated. Oh, bipolarity. Well. Why don't you better come closer? Ah, you'll see the glass finally spilled, and the orange-haired girl ran to cut the Seker Yute in two, who showed no signs of doing the same, or even trying to avoid her. For a moment she believed that she had already won this confrontation, but just as the sentence says, it was for a moment. Since, at the last moment, the masked man moved to the side to evade Shid Marina's blade, which only hit the wind, she as she again charged with a small jump to retry her first movement. The result was the same, with the boy dodging the katana at the last second by taking a step back. Changing techniques, the exorcist launched multiple thrusts at high speed, and yet the Red Emperor Dragon continued to evade them, almost as if it were a dance. But there was something else that caught the attention of the wielder of Excalibur Mimic. Some attacks that he couldn't dodge, he deflected them with his free hand. At this pace the girl was going to get tired, so she resorted to doing a circular sweep to distract her opponent and thus move back a few meters, with a pirouette. So the exorcists use gymnastics to fight. Great, the boy commented, praising the orange-haired girl's agility in combat. It's not something you see every day. Are you playing with me or what? You haven't counter-attacked even once, Irina stressed, feeling a mixture of anger and frustration at her opponent's clear disinterest in her confrontation. Are you at least taking me seriously? Of course I'm taking this seriously, I only took the trouble to analyze your technique, said the young man, taking his sword with both hands and raising his guard. Time to get serious so that you believe me, just keep up with me, want. Eh. Uh. If it weren't for the fact that she had arduously trained her reflexes for years, the girl with pigtails would not have been able to block the masked man's weapon, starting a small struggle between swords. What a speed, perhaps a little faster than hers. Or even Zenobia's. I must concentrate, the exorcist thought quickly, pushing away the bad thoughts that could well flood her mind in seconds, and returned her attention to the Seker Yuite. I'm impressed, you don't brandish an Excalibur for nothing, the boy mentioned, pushing his rival with his sword, taking the opportunity to make a diagonal slash. The swordswoman moved back in time to evade that cut, so she quickly decides to counterattack, turning her katana into a spear, the orange-haired girl attacks Issei, who likewise faces her, raising her scarlet sword. I suggest you hurry up if you want to prevent the peroxide blonde from dying by Korda's hand, you're somewhat right. I was very delusional to believe that I could avoid this confrontation. Listening to the legendary dragon inside him, the brunette stopped clowning and became attentive to what was coming. Clash, the clashes between weapons did not wait and little by little, the bearer of Excalibur Mimic was gaining ground, alternating between spear, sword and occasionally a huge mallet with which she hit the ground to try to destabilize the Welsh dragon and thus deliver the final blow. Funny. Both the Gremory and the Citri groups remained at a safe distance witnessing both fights. Surprise, nervousness and a hint of fear settled in each of the young people, especially among those less experienced in fighting of this kind. They can even feel the small tremors caused by the envoys of the church, boom, the earth rumbled again but with greater intensity, because the Excalibur destruction of the green-haired warrior created a crater of considerable size. The Gremory Knight's weapons once again perished before the sacred sword, with the difference that this perhaps the blonde did not manage to emerge unscathed from the last roar, since both his uniform and his body were badly damaged. Blood flowed from Kiba's forehead, mouth and arms, but he didn't seem to care how injured he was, due to the fact that, in his desperation, he created another large sword, having certain similarities with Zenobia's. Perhaps, if his sword has the same volume, he will finally be able to make at least a scratch. What a disappointment. Meanwhile with the aforementioned, his air of boredom was such that he only hoped that Lucifer's servant would stand up to defeat him once and for all, and put an end to this great fiasco. In the end the blonde turned out to be nothing more than a talker. He only needs to prove the same with the supposed possessor of the boosted gear dot. And speaking of Drake's wielder. He's not going to last much longer. He observed the current condition of the Gremory demon and assumed that his fight was close to ending with his inevitable defeat. Then he remembered that the blade of his sword was already very cracked and could not last longer than two impacts. After realizing that, he waited for the violet-eyed girl to transform her weapon into a spear again, and when she did it again to try to stab him in the left shoulder with a jump, he threw his katana into the sky and in an agile movement, caught the stick in the air and snatched it from Arena. The sword he threw a few moments ago coincidentally fell into his hand. The girl with pigtails rolled after being thrown into the air, and when she turned around, she had the masked man in front of her, pointing his red katana at her neck. 
End of the game, the Sekar Uite declared as he nailed Excalibur Mimic to the ground, which had returned to its original form. I win. TSK the Exorcist could only complain at such a humiliating defeat. Not only did he not hurt her opponent, but he also lost her weapon. At least her companion defeated the meddling demon. Not long ago, blue-haired, this one was already leaving when. It's. Wait Kiba exclaimed pleadingly as purple smoke escaped from his wound. The Excalibur wielder turned her head to see him hh how. You exposed yourself completely with that last move, so it was easy to counter your predictable attack, the exorcist coldly pointed out the mistake that cost the blonde the fight. A lot of talk for nothing. And then no P it could be. Happening, said the swordsman with difficulty and on the verge of fainting, due to the immense pain that coursed through his body due to the sacred magic. Bad day to be a demon. Am I? Dot friends. I promise WW that. The. Goss spit out a lot of blood after that. If I wasn't forbidden to kill you, this fight would have had a different ending, commented the girl with green hair, resting her sacred sword on her shoulder. She turned to see the supposed bearer of the Welsh dragon cornering her companion. In the meantime, I must defeat to another charlatan, huh? The Sekar Uite turned to see a curious blue trail that was heading very quickly towards him, so he invoked a defensive magic circle that served to barely block the attack of the church envoy. Um, I admit, you are very agile. Confessed the girl with green hair, propelling herself backwards using the protective spell of her new opponent to put distance from each other, and later she pointed her gun at the masked man. But that doesn't prove that be the Sekar Uite of this era. I am not in the need to use my sacred gear. Yes, yes, whatever you say, said Zenovia, downplaying the stranger's words. Why did she continue with the same antics? It's infuriating what I still don't understand is why you interfered in our affairs. We didn't do anything that affected you in any way. Air, the drag wielder pointed out, rolling up his glove, releasing a small part of his draconian aura, making the atmosphere heavier, and making his anger clear. This ended up involving me when you decided that it was right to kill that girl. The leaders of the Gremory and Citri retinue stayed aloof from everything that came out of the dragon's mouth, and of course they tried to understand what led someone like him, a long Inus possessor, to rescue a former nun from the clutches of some fifth-class fallen angels. But everything is my fault. Asia, who was still a bundle of nerves, felt a big knot in her stomach due to the mixture of fear and guilt that invaded her. It is because of her that Kiba said he ended up very badly injured. The Jet Queen pulled the blonde into a small hug to try to console her. That she cares about her in that way is no coincidence, since after knowing what she suffered with those black winged bastards, it ate at her deepest core. His soul. Ah, Dot, are you serious? Back to the fight, and definitively losing her temper, the young exorcist decides to attack the hooded man to tear him to pieces, caring little or nothing about the rule of not killing everything, this circus is because of that damn witch. That last exclamation completely captured the attention of the Sekar Uite, who as soon as he saw his opponent approaching, raised his left arm and. Clash, enough. With that, boost, the Welsh dragon caught the holy sword in his hand, which was now covered by the legendary Scarlet Gauntlet, stopping the green locked girl's powerful attack in its tracks. His expression of complete disbelief was worth photographing, along with the of some of the members of the Citri clan. The Gremory nobility along with Sona and Tsubaki had already observed how strong the masked man was, since not everyone can face a high-class demon along with his entire entourage. But fight two exorcists at the same time and equipped with weapons. Of great power, not that it was an easy task, even for them who have been demons from the cradle. I have been very lenient with you, but no longer the Red Emperor Dragon kept his grip firm on the sacred sword that the Blue Net was desperately trying to get rid of, the hooded man began to cover his right hand with the ambient air until it was completely concentrated in his entire palm and. Soyak is sweeping breeze. In a sudden movement, he draws the Excalibur towards him along with the Exorcist, and once she is within reach of it, he hits her with his open hand, impacting all the compressed wind on her abdomen, which throws her several meters back until she crashes against a tree. Irina could only watch in shock at the ease with which her partner was incapacitated. What kind of humiliation is this? Zenobia's eyes widened. She couldn't believe it. She refused to believe it. How was this possible? Did this liar seriously stop his Excalibur destruction as if it were a wooden stick? Ah ha ha the girl with green hair got back up as best she could, wiping the trickle of blood that came down from her mouth and with her dignity on the floor. Not only did she lose in an embarrassing way, but they also took his sword. The victory goes to Kiba Ikto and the Sekar Uite, concluded Sona, stunned once again by the actions of the Welsh dragon. How on earth did he stop a sword with as much power as Excalibur destruction in its tracks? I did not risk everything for you to come here to impose your justice, said the Red Emperor Dragon still holding the blade of Excalibur destruction, who suddenly grabbed it by the handle and threw it towards the blue-haired girl the fight ended, they should leave.
then he took Excalibur Mimic out of the ground and gave it to the orange-haired girl delicately, dot and I hope that now they keep their word. The pigtailed girl went to her companion to make sure she wasn't too hurt, as she even shook the tree she collided with, all while she constantly looked at the Welsh dragon. And not with kind eyes. Enduring both the physical pain and the blow to their pride, the duo of exorcists took their respective robes and left in silence. The challengers were overcome. On the blonde swordsman's side. Buug. The members of the Gremory nobility were already going to help their entourage companion, but someone else beat them to it. Again. Don't resist to say rushed to attend to his friend, who was close to falling unconscious, carefully carrying him on his shoulder come on, I'll take you inside. If you allow me, of course after saying that last thing, he turned to Sirius and Sona. The high-class demons only nodded their heads as they followed both boys very closely. Hibba, on the other hand, could see the red katana that the Sekiruite was wielding just a few moments ago. Seeing it so cracked but still complete made him feel a knot in his stomach. One that would hardly leave. Back at the abandoned building. I carried Kiba inside and helped him lay down on the club chair, then moved away to one of the bookshelves so Asia could heal him as soon as possible. Not even a minute passed before he was able to stand up, before he headed towards the exit with his head down. It's obvious that Riaz is not happy about my friend's insubordination, but you can't reason with someone blinded by revenge. Dot. Stop there Ecto. Your actions put us at risk said Riaz, reprimanding Kiba's impulsive actions. I just kept silent because I still do the same thing, like today I won't forgive you for doing whatever you wanted. Dot you're a grimmery knight, so act like one. I'm sorry but you. Kaiju. Ikto, Lam, and Kiba left slamming the door without looking back. He's the same as I remember. Maybe even worse. The silence was such that I could hear the breathing of those close to me, like Tomo-san and Tsubaki-san. The word uncomfortable describes the situation very well. It's getting dark. I should go too, Zenobia and Arena are probably about to arrive at my house. I'll take advantage of the fact that everyone is facing the door to go out through one of the windows. I could very well use a teleportation circle, but it would draw unnecessary attention. Do you really think that going out the window is the best option? I heard Drake questioning me again. Wait, he has a point. You know, it's true, but I'm already inches from the glass, so it doesn't matter I preferred to leave it there, because the truth is I'm already nervous enough to think about something else. I was about to open the window when. Why are you here? Hmm? I choose cold voice caused everyone to turn in my direction, ruining my impeccable escape attempt. How did you know about all this? Of the meeting, he said in the form of an interrogation and approaching at a slow pace. Imposing authority is his best quality, especially when it comes to intimidating enemies. Who are you under that mask, and what do you want? Sekiruite. This is the moment when I must leave, or else they will distrust me even more. Quick, a more or less convincing answer. Ah. I know. Dot I'm just a weirdo. Who does whatever he pleases. Ready? Now. Dynamic output. Boosh. Hey wait. I opened the window as fast as I could, jumped, ran along the facade of the building, and invoked the teleportation circle to appear in an alley that was a few blocks from my house. I could hear Sona's scream calling me, probably in search of a better answer. I feel sorry for her, but from now on answers will be the last thing she will get from me. Wow. I took off my hood and mask, taking advantage of the fact that it was dark to breathe some fresh air. What an intense afternoon. I'm disappointed that you didn't use my power almost to the end, partner my good reptile friend spoke. Excuse me for that drag, it's just that I I didn't want to hurt them, yet yet, if you put it like that I'll feel bad. Heh thanks for understanding brother. I held back too much in my fight with Arena, and even more so when I sent Zenovia about 10 meters against a tree, in fact, for a moment I thought she had fractured her spine, but seeing her struggle to her feet again made her mentally sigh in relief. I swallowed the lump that was forming in my throat and shook my head to stop myself from thinking about this. I'll buy a first aid kit in case I have to treat them when I get home. They'll probably try to hide their injuries from my parents, but they won't get rid of me very easily. Obviously hydrogen peroxide and regular bandages won't heal the girl's bruises so quickly, so I'm going to infuse them with a pinch of magic based on the sinjutsu I learned, since it acts as a painkiller and regenerative agent. Or that's what I thought. I learned from Kuroka. By the way, how will she be? It's been a while since I've seen her, I hope she's not in trouble. I changed into the academy uniform, with my briefcase included using magic, and went in the direction of the pharmacy. I went for what was necessary and applied enough magic to them and headed home, it had already gotten dark by this point, and it didn't take a second for the street lamps to turn on, illuminating my path. There are three more people here, the first being a well-dressed man who was walking in the opposite direction to mine, he was wearing his shirt and tie a little baggy, and I could see absolute exhaustion in his eyes. On the other side of the street walked a very lively young couple, from their faces and clothes, I would say that they are no more than 20 years old, and they are probably a little drunk because of how close they are to each other, how red their cheeks are. And because of their erratic way of walking. 
seeing these characters made me think a little. It doesn't matter if the day has been long or short, boring or fun, good or bad. We always hope to return home, in the case of the potential businessman to eat something and sleep like a log, and the couple for. I don't want to imagine it. I wonder what mom has made for dinner it took me 5 more minutes to get home, and I opened the door to be greeted by the aroma of freshly cooked food. I smell miso soup I'm home, welcome ice, we're going to have dinner soon I heard Oka sand from the kitchen, probably finishing preparing the food, I left what I bought on the stairs and went to where she was to greet her well. Did you finish your club duties? Yes, mom, fortunately it wasn't much, okay, I must admit that I had to lie to my mother to make my appearance at Ria's and Sona's meeting, since it was very clear that she would be suspicious if I arrived late from school, so I warned her that I would be back until dinner time for pending assumptions that I had as a member of the history club. I don't feel too bad about this little lie either, I mean, I did have issues to resolve in the club, but history is the last thing I see. I'm glad, Autumn San will arrive in an hour, while he goes to see our guests. I nod and go up to the first floor until I reach the guest room, where Zenovia and Irina are staying. I knocked on the door twice and heard a rather loud sound coming from inside, as if someone had fallen just now, I knocked again, worried about whatever it was that sounded, and now I did receive a response. Am, is something wrong Okasan? It's me, Issei, I said, getting a little closer to hear my childhood best friend better, then it suddenly opens, showing the aforementioned. She looks very tired because she hasn't even taken off her suit. Of battle arena. Is everything okay there? I need your help Ice Kun, B, but I don't want Mickey San to find out about this, she said, breathing hard and sweating more than normal. What is she? Whoa well, then she pulled my arm, and as soon as she made sure she was inside, she slammed the door shut. I saw the bed and there was an unconscious Zenovia, lying face down and with a large bruise that covered almost her entire mid and lower back. The hell, what did I do? W what happened to her? W why is his back like that? I couldn't help but put my hand to my mouth and I couldn't take my eyes off it either. It was impossible for me to hide my shock at the size and severity of that wound, we have to take them to a hospital. And no, Irina said almost as a plea, clinging tightly to my arm, her gaze lowered and little by little, she slid through the door without letting me go, forcing me to sit down the same way. Irina. I realized that she didn't finish her sentence, I moved her hair to one side of her because she was covering her eyes, which were closed. She had fainted for Kami's sake, hold on. I picked her up in my arms and laid her down in the free space of the bed, I sneaked around to get the medicine cabinet and returned to the room as quickly as I could, I locked the door and got to work. Good thing I brought extra bandages. It took me some time, but I managed to mostly heal Zenovia and Irina's wounds, all because I learned how to give first aid in the past. Taking care of my dear childhood friend was not very complicated, there were only a few cuts, bruises and both fatigue and accumulated stress were what knocked her out. The real challenge was area under her chest. Tiredness overcame them and they fell asleep, just as it was finishing, but they stopped wriggling, and by the expressions on their faces, you can see that they are more relieved. Now they just need to rest a little, because the magic will speed up the process. Just a little, to save you some pain, I covered them with a sheet and left the room. Fortunately, I finished treating them and Ottensen arrived home almost immediately, so I just made up the excuse that they had eaten before and went straight to sleep. After dinner. Yes, they believed me, I went to see them one last time before leaving to try to fall asleep because of everything I experienced today, I just hope they are better for tomorrow. How I wish I had the magic healing from Asia. But I know that if I cured them with something more powerful, both they and Rias, Sona and even Kaneko-chan, would realize that something was not right, in the case of the demons they would discover ahead of time that two exorcists are staying at my house, and they would start investigating me. I don't like doing this for many reasons, but it's the best. Also, I'll try to convince Asia to use hers twilight healing on them as soon as possible to heal them completely, and thus have my alibi. Although I don't know how you feel about them. And their dismissive behavior. The next day, in the afternoon. Zenovia Korda had woken up feeling very unwell. The reason? Her abdomen and back that were injured after her fight against the Sekiryute. Hurt like hell. But that was the least of it, since she was more bothered by the fact that she was overtaken from one moment to the next, without her being able to do anything to prevent it. There were multiple occasions where she had to put in her place a bunch of Cretans who boasted about her power, feeling superior to the rest of her, so she confronted those conceited people and forced them to put their faces. Feet on the ground. Now the shifts were reversed, and she was the one who received a dose of her own medicine, plus her irresponsibility endangered both her partner and the entire operation. Ugh. It hurts, she muttered, rubbing her eyes to see almost half of her torso bandaged, but she was still wearing her battle suit. It's good that you woke up, you had Arena worried a male voice echoed in the room. Haim Misse was sitting in a chair in the corner of the room reading don't worry, she's in the bathroom he continued without looking up. From his book. Why you dot did you do tt this? 
The brunette questioned, pointing to her abdomen. If you mean the bandages, yes. I don't understand what happened to you, but I did what I could, he responded, closing her book and putting all of her attention on it, he stood up, walking in the direction of the exorcist. Who or what did they fight against? That is confidential, hmm, I understand officer, the brunette said jokingly, causing Zenovia to look at him in annoyance. Bad joke. Look, I know it's not my business, but there are some people who want to talk to you. W who? He asked, slowly sitting up in bed due to the general pain. People interested in fulfilling their mission, Issei mentioned, approaching the girl with blue hair, making her move away instinctively, to which he raised his hands. It's okay, I'm just going to apply more ointment to you, I mean, I don't know what. It happened to you first, a magic. They used magic and V defeated me, said the wielder of Excalibur Destruction, relaxing to allow herself to be treated by the boy, who carefully removed the bandages and rolled them up. Until something clicked in her mind. H how do you know about in our mission? Irina told me some things the other night, nothing specific, the boy confessed while applying the ointment with great delicacy. Turn around. Odd. Give me patience he told his host about this, then he realized something else and you weren't surprised ngh by the magic thing. Well, I also told him that my friends are demons so. With what I've discovered, almost nothing surprises me anymore, the honey-eyed man responded, as if experiencing strange events were out of the ordinary. Of course, taking into account his background. Of years with the supernatural what difference does it make? I'll bring you something to eat, the people I'm telling you about will arrive in a few hours, wait, hmm? The girl with green hair made her host stop in the doorway and turned to look at her expectantly. W why are you taking so much trouble W with me? Who knows, maybe. I couldn't ignore your pain, Issei concluded, leaving the guest room and closing the door, leaving the exorcist confused. The moment of reflection did not last long alone since Irina appeared and as soon as he saw her conscious, he ran to hug her, relieved. Although he pushed her aside because he felt how her insides were crushed even more by her arms. His partner. Shortly after, Issei arrived with a plate of soba accompanied by Amuris and a cup of jasmine tea. What a combination, right? But the Excalibur wielder didn't seem to care and gorged herself as if she hadn't eaten in weeks. At a slow pace and with the help of the orange-haired girl, Zenovia stood up to walk a little. She wanted to compose herself as soon as possible to continue what she was sent to do. Luckily the only thing that caused more pain was her back, which little by little was more tolerable. The rest of her is in order as far as possible. He went towards the bathroom without help to try to clean himself a little, his limbs and face at least, since his torso was still healing. He has a suspicion that the ointment that Issei used is one out of the ordinary. Ordinary, as it doesn't feel like one you would get at the drugstore. Unless it's a homemade one, like traditional Japanese medicine. It's hard to know, but what makes her not trust him as much anymore is that she has admitted to having ties to demons, most likely those of the Grimory House or Citri. If not both. I'll get answers later, she thought, wetting her face in the sink. The exorcist stared at herself in the mirror, with drops of water falling from her face and looking at herself from her hair to her hip, which was also covered. Not even in her time as her apprentice did she care. They kicked ass as much as yesterday. She left the bathroom more refreshed and went down the stairs at a slow pace until she reached the living room where Irina was watching television. Where are Heim Missae's parents? She asked, taking a seat in the armchair in front of the one where the orange-haired girl is sitting. Oh, Goru-san and Miki-san told us that they would be late. They won't be back until dinner time, said Issei, complimenting the response of his childhood friend, who in turn brought with him a tray on which there was a porcelain tea set that he left on the coffee table. Plenty of time to chat, the exorcist saw that there were three extra cups on the tray, she was already going to ask when at that moment the doorbell rang, drawing the attention of those present. I'll be back right away. The brunette went to attend to whoever was at the entrance, and it was neither more nor less than her little white-haired cowhide. There was something curious about her. She was wearing her summer school uniform, which unlike the winter one, is that her shirt was short-sleeved, but that wasn't the unusual thing, rather what she was wearing behind her. She. Good afternoon, I senpai, she greeted, raising her hand slightly without losing her characteristic expressionless frown. Hineko chan, you arrived just in time, Issei said, more than relieved, mainly because she couldn't think of a good topic of conversation. He looked to the side to see something equally important. Or maybe I should say, they arrived. Mmmmmm -hmm. behind the white-haired girl was a red cart that brought with a gentium saji, gagged like a farm animal. He even had his mouth covered with a balled up rag, which he managed to spit out as soon as he saw the chestnut yuck Heimdo, you better explain to me what the hell is happening. H hello Saji, I promise to explain everything to you inside, seriously pfffff the boy justified himself, holding back his amusement at seeing his friend tied with his arms and legs up, then he went back to her cowhide to whisper something to her. Did you manage to convince Kiba to come? He said. 
Maybe he would stop by here, Kaneko responded, making a face of resignation. She doesn't like to see her senpai behave so contemptuously. Not okay the young man decided to leave the question of the pretty boy until there. Yes or if he should appear if he wants progress come in, come in, I'm leave the mystery behind and say. HMMMPHHH the farmhand Citri was going to continue complaining when Kaneko silenced him again with the same rag that he picked up from the ground. How humiliating. Issei stepped aside for his two friends to enter. Or rather, Kaneko carrying Saji in her cart. He closed the door and got in front of his guests as quickly as he could, when they reached the entrance of the room he motioned to the Gremory Tower to wait a second. When the exorcists, who were drinking tea, noticed the presence of the chestnut tree and turned to look at him expectantly. Well, I don't know if you already know them, but. The boy began and after a brief pause, he moved to the side of the entrance I want to introduce you to Tenjo Kaneko, Tower of the Gremory Nobility. God excuse me, Kaneko bowed slightly in greeting, but without taking her eyes off the women. God and Jenshram Saji, a pawn of the Citri nobility, Issei continued after his cowhai pulled her cart to show the aforementioned. Huff what's up? The blonde introduced himself after spitting out the rag from his mouth again, trying to sound cool. The duo turned to look at each other for a moment before returning their gaze to the front. Aha, we know who they are, Zenovia commented, closing her eyes, remembering that she saw both high school students yesterday afternoon. Are they the ones you were talking about before? But what could two low-class demons want to talk to us? The orange-haired woman questioned, touching her lip. We want to help you find the lost fragments of Excalibur. The youngest member of the play spoke firmly, at the same time that she looked the brunette directly in her eyes, which hit her initial surprise almost perfectly. Ah, that's new, don't you think, Zenovia? Irina said, breaking the ice, but with an unusual neutral tone. Yes. Too much, the green-haired exorcist responded, narrowing her eyes as she directed her gaze between the brunette and her demonic friends. Um dot don't you guys like some tea? He essay asked because he was nervous about a fight starting in the living room. Both sides get along worse than he remembered. Everything seems to indicate that the envoys of the church will have support to carry out their objective. Whether they want it or not. We will know next. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.